briefly north from the pass to the Peruvian town of Cusco. So we've arrived in Cusco in Peru and we're going to be here for a couple of weeks in total. Um, we're in Cusco for three nights before heading off on a week-long hike to Machu Picchu. So the next few days we're just going to chill in the city and have a wander around. I've just taken a 30 minute walk up this hill to another Incan ruin which I believe is pronounced Sexy Woman. I'll put the spelling up just so you guys can double check. Uh, you get great views from up here and you've got Cusco lying below me um, and the sun's in a great position for taking some close-up shots of the terracotta ruins. Saxai Woman was the most important military base in the Incan Empire. It is considered one of the best examples of Incan engineering and is revered for its perfectly cut stones which make up the large defensive walls. were famous for their ability to cut stone and this wall behind me you can see some of the join marks and cuts are perfect. Um, I'll throw up a video just of a 12 sided stone that is perfectly cut to the line with the stones round about. It's quite impressive. Just now it is the end of the rainy season, which means there's a lot more clouds and rain showers around. In some cases that's not absolutely ideal for taking photographs. Um, what it does mean is I might need to, when I'm editing, go for some black and white edits, which give a nice moody um, feel to some of the photographs. Either way, we're going to see some amazing things over the next few days and I'll worry about the shots as and when I see them. Welcome to Trinquero, which is one of the Incan ruins in the Sacred Valley area, not far from Machu Picchu. Um, the Incans were famous for their rock formations, and you can see the terraces out behind me. This was thought to be a summer residence of the Incan. I'm now at the Maris salt pools, and these pools uh, predate the Incans. Um, and what they were used to do was to collect stream water and then turn that water um, into salt by drying it out in the pools that you can see behind me. Um, it's a great area for photography. The sun's come out as well, so I'm getting a lot of uh, bright lights, which is good, and it means that um, nothing's dark and everything's quite clear as well. Um, I'm going to just walk around here for a few minutes getting a few different shots, both close and further away. Welcome to Moray. This is thought to have been an experimental garden basically. The circular terraces you see behind me have different soils and they also face different directions. So the Incans were able to uh, determine which plants did best depending on the light sources and the wind direction.
Whilst in Chinchero, I visited a traditional weaving cooperative. The women showed us some of the natural plants and minerals which were used to dye the alpaca wool before it was woven into beautiful garments and shawls. the town of Chinchero and this is the first day of a seven day hike which will result in us reaching Machu Picchu. Um, today we've just got a short hike, maybe eight or nine kilometres. Um, and as we go, the hikes will get longer and longer. But yeah, great weather just now and hopefully we get some good shorts. Lincoln's built many trails. This one from Chinchero has been repaired and is in good condition. It leads to the sacred valley. second day of hiking and uh, today we're going actually to our highest elevation of the whole hike, 4,400 metres. We're probably a couple hundred metres off that just now but uh, yeah it's pretty tough at this altitude just to try and keep a regular breath and keeping oxygen in, in the lungs. Um, really nice views so we literally are in the middle of nowhere um, and I'll try and put up a few good shots. During our hike, we came across a herd of llamas eating grass. These animals excel at the high altitudes of the Andes. As we descended the mountain, we stopped by a village where some locals demonstrated how they prepared the earth, then planted potatoes, which are native to Peru. of the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu is the most famous. The Incans built trails covering around 20,000 miles throughout South America. Some of these trails have been repaired, however the vast majority have been left untouched and look like this. Just come towards the end of our hike on day two. Um, behind me you can see the Incan ruins of a town called Pisac. Uh, so we're going to head down there and just do a bit of exploring. The scenery is absolutely beautiful though. Um, we passed about 4,500 metres, so it was pretty tough going up, but we were coming down the slopes, the, the views were spectacular. That evening, we were cooked a traditional Peruvian barbecue. Rocks were heated by fire for a few hours before the potatoes and wrapped meat were put in the pit. 
These were covered by hot stones, green stalks, blankets and finally earth. After an hour the food was ready and tasted delicious. We've just reached the Lares Valley at 4,461 metres. That's the highest point on our trip to Machu Picchu. Uh, so we're going to head down before having another hike. En route, we stopped at a local market where the colours of the traditional Peruvian dress were on show. The hike's been alright most of the way. The um, last five ten minutes have been a bit tougher with uh, with the altitude, so just need to get into a good breathing routine. Hopefully, when we get to the pass, we'll get some great views over the other side. were fantastic. We began our descent into the town of Wakawazi. A few years ago the Chilean government built new houses for the villagers in the town of Wakawazi. These homes have very little insulation so most still use their old traditional houses and use the new houses as storage. I was lucky enough to visit one of the traditional houses. In these, locals sleep, cook and even keep guinea pigs, which they will later eat. village where the leader demonstrated the traditional Pachamama or Mother Earth ceremony. During the ceremony the Apu mountain spirits were praised before Chicha was thrown over a tied up lamb. For this demonstration the lamb was released. This tradition goes back to Incan times and was thought to provide shelter, food and fertility. I'm exploring Oleante Tambo. Behind me you can see a big fort on the hillside. Um, we're spending a few hours down here before getting the train up to Machu Picchu this afternoon, which I'm really looking forward to. Hopefully the weather holds out. storage um, buildings which was up in the cliffs outside the town. The reason it was so high was to preserve the goods. It was colder up here and also the wind got in through the big windows at the end of each building. Behind me you can see the town there and you can see how high up they are. Oye Antu Tambo was an important administrative hub in Incan times as the access to the sacred valley, the Lares Valley, 
on Machu Picchu were controlled from here. It is also where I departed on a scenic train ride to Machu Picchu. So after seven days, I've finally made it to Machu Picchu. The weather's pretty good. There's no uh, clouds and the visibility's good. So I'm gonna just take a load of photos up here and I'll explain what I've been doing after. So it started raining and there's um, thunderstorms passing through just now. The great thing about Machu Picchu is it's even great to photograph in the rain and the fog. It adds uh, a lot of atmosphere to your shots. Okay, I'm back at Machu Picchu for a second day and the weather is beautiful. We've got nice blue skies, a few clouds, but much clearer than yesterday. I'm going to head up to the Sun Gate now and hopefully get some great photos from up there. Machu Picchu was essentially lost for 500 years. It wasn't until the early 1900s that the site was discovered again and archaeologists started clearing the jungle to reveal what is an amazing citadel today. After about 45 minutes of climbing, I've made it up to Huayna Picchu, which is one of the big mountains that overlooks uh, Machu Picchu. To be honest, it's a pretty tough climb, more or less vertical the whole way, so I'm going to stay up here and enjoy the views and uh, not looking forward to going back there. Almost down from Wainu Picchu, the rain is beginning to fall now, and I'm glad that we got up there early. It makes it very important in places like this where the weather is changeable just to keep taking photographs and try and get to as many different viewpoints as you can because you just don't know what the weather is going to do. Join me next time when you'll see how our travel plans were impacted by the coronavirus.